Khalees Rogers was raised in Harlem by her African-American father and her Chinese and Puerto Rican mother. She planned to perform on Broadway after graduating from New York's LaGuardia High School of Performing Arts. However, she told the LA Times that after an argument with her mom, she left home at the age of 16. She continued attending school while living independently, working on music projects, and singing backup for various rap groups. Through a mutual friend, she met Pharrell Williams, who was one half of the Virginia Beach production duo, The Neptunes. After singing for Pharrell and his music partner, Chad Hugo, the trio formed a tight bond, and Khalees became their muse. As the Neptunes worked with other artists, they found ways for Khalees to get some shine as well, such as the time they had her sing the chorus on the late ODB song, Got Your Money. With the Neptunes' help, Khalees signed with Virgin Records, and when she started working on her first album, she and the Neptunes entered into an agreement. Khalees alleges they agreed to split their publishing earnings equally between the three of them. She was young and naive and thought she was entering into a business agreement with people that cared about her. She told The Guardian that the Neptunes, their management, and their lawyers all led her to believe that it was a good and fair deal. So 19-year-old Khalees signed on the dotted line, which was a terrible mistake. This story involves multiple beefs between Khalees and the Neptunes, Nas and Jay-Z, and of course, we'll be discussing that Beyonce situation. You know this is about to be some mess, so be sure to scoop up a bag of turkey, bacon, or brisket beef jerky, cheddar bacon popcorn, and butter toffee peanuts from rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has thousands of five-star reviews. Khalees released her debut album Kaleidoscope in 1999. The Neptunes wrote and produced every song on the album, and Khalees received co-writing credits on a few songs as well. Described as a mixture of cyberpunk and R&B, tracks like Caught Out There, Get Along With You, and In The Morning became fan favorites. Khalees also made bold statements with her colorful afro and vintage-inspired outfits. She was the coolest singer on the scene and a breath of fresh air for the R&B market. It was around this time that rumors emerged about Khalees and Pharrell being an item, and Contact Music website reported the two began dating in 2001. Khalees denied that their relationship was anything more than platonic. When it came time to record her second album, Wonderland, Khalees took creative control by getting even more involved with the songwriting process. The album was released in Europe and Asia in 2001. However, it didn't receive a North American release date because, according to Khalees, the execs at Virgin Records didn't know how to market her properly. Khalees decided to leave the States and spent some time in Europe. Upon her return to the U.S., her label wanted her to re-record some of the songs on Wonderland so it could finally be released to her U.S. audience. But by that point, Khalees was fed up and asked to be released from her contract. A rep for Virgin Records told Entertainment Weekly that they agreed to release her due to the album's poor overseas performance and Khalees' refusal to record new material for the U.S. release. Entertainment Weekly added that they understood the label's standpoint because, quote, the album has an uneven and downbeat vibe, likely influenced by Khalees' rumored romance with Pharrell Williams, which was reportedly falling apart during the recording sessions. Even though their alleged romance fizzled out, Khalees and Pharrell remained friends. And when the Neptunes launched their Star Trek imprint on Arista Records, they signed Khalees to the label along with rap group Clips. Khalees told Contact Music that Pharrell was trying to be a matchmaker and would constantly tell her, Nas would be perfect for you. In 2002, while attending Diddy's MTV VMA party, Nas approached Khalees and said something along the lines of, I've been looking for you for years and I want to make you my wife. Khalees responded, that's great, because that's what I want to be. Two days later, they had their first date, a romantic walk through Central Park. She told The Independent, I just knew this was the person I was supposed to be with. She and Nas went on to make sweet music together and teamed up for the track Popular Thug for the Neptunes compilation album, Clones. It was during the production of her third studio album that Khalees decided to try something new. 
Instead of solely relying on the Neptunes, she reached out to some of the friends she had made in the industry to see if they wanted to appear on her new project. Kalise told The Guardian that she could tell the Neptunes were really offended that she wanted to work with other people. The Neptunes still produced a handful of tracks, but the album also included appearances by Andre 3000, Raphael Sadiq, and Nas for the song In Public. Tasty dropped in 2003. The song Milkshake became an international hit and earned her a Grammy nomination. Everything appeared to be going right in her career, or so she thought. She was making money from touring, but she started to notice she wasn't receiving any payments on the publishing side of things. That's when she discovered she had signed a shady contract with the Neptunes. Kalise told The Guardian that because they, quote, blatantly lied to and tricked her, she made nothing off of her first two albums. When she confronted the Neptunes about the contract, she said, their argument is, well, you signed it. I'm like, yeah, I signed what I was told, and I was too young and too stupid to double check it. Several media outlets, including The Guardian and Complex Magazine, reached out to Pharrell and Chad to get their side of things, but neither of them responded. In 2004, Kalise and Nas got engaged. That same year, after the Sony Records and BMG merger, she found herself on Jive Records, and her relationship with the Neptunes came to an end. She released three more albums after parting ways with the Neptunes, including 2006's Khalees Was Here, which features the mega hit, Bossy. Khalees and Nas got married in 2005. After allegations of infidelity and each of them claiming the other got physical during their marriage, Khalees filed for divorce in 2009 while she was pregnant with their son, Knight. Nas and Khalees finalized their divorce in 2010. Two years later, Khalees was disrespected by none other than Jay-Z. In case you're unaware, Jay-Z and Khalees' ex-husband Nas had one of the longest feuds in hip-hop history, dating back to the 90s. Their beef is way too deep for us to discuss today, but it includes Jay-Z sleeping with Nas's daughter's mother, Carmen Bryan. Jay-Z bragged about their fling in his 2001 song, Supa Ugly. During an interview with Vlad TV, Carmen claims she got pregnant by Jay-Z during their fling, but she suffered a miscarriage. And we simply don't have time to go any further into this beef, so we've dropped a link in our description box for you to catch up on the history of Nas and Jay-Z's drama. So anyway, back in 2012, Jay-Z teamed up with Kanye West and Big Sean for the song Click. In the lyrics, Jay-Z raps, yeah, I'm talking yay. Yeah, I'm talking re. Yeah, I'm talking B. I'm talking me. Yeah, I'm talking bossy. I ain't talking police. Jay's verse had everyone saying WTF. If his beef was with Nas, why would he publicly diss Nas's ex-wife? Looking back on the verse, it's just another instance of Khalees being disrespected by people in the industry. Khalees married photographer Mike Mora in 2014, and they welcomed two children. Khalees shifted from music to exploring her culinary creativity and even co-owned a farm in Colombia. Sadly, her husband succumbed to stomach cancer in March 2022. Because she and the Neptunes are in the same industry, she has run into them more than a few times. During a 2020 interview with The Guardian, she said Pharrell was performing at an industry event a few years back, and she was in the audience. Khalees added, And he did that thing to me that he's notorious for, which is making a nod from the stage, so it seems like there's mutual respect. Instead of screaming, you stole all my publishing, she just nodded back, which led their industry friends to believe they had patched things up. When asked during her 2020 interview with The Guardian if she'd ever work with Pharrell again, Khalees answered, um, at that point there's having faith and there is also just stupidity. And this brings us to 2022. After Beyonce's album Renaissance leaked on the internet, that's when Khalees found out that her song Milkshake was interpolated on Beyonce's song Energy. According to Rolling Stone, interpolating consists of tweaking a portion of an existing song to give it a fresh sound. Using her verified Instagram account, she wrote that her mind was blown by the level of disrespect and the, quote, utter ignorance of all three parties involved is astounding. She also said that people in the music business have no soul or integrity. Of course, the three parties she was referring to were Beyonce, Pharrell, and Chad. 
Khalees said Beyonce has copied her before, but this time things have gone too far. The reality is, okay, is that my real beef is not only with Beyonce because at the end of the day, she sampled a record, she's copied me before, she's done it before, so have many other artists, it's fine, I don't care about that. The issue is, is that not only do, are we female artists, okay, black female artists in an industry that we, there's not that many of us, right? We've met each other, we know each other, we have mutual friends, it's not hard, she can contact, right? It's just common decency, right? It's common decency, especially because, because, as so many of you pointed out, as though I don't know, but let me help you, okay? I know what I own and what I don't own. I also know the lies that were told. I also know the things that were stolen. Publishing was stolen. People were swindled out of rights. It happens all the time, especially back then. So it's not about me being mad about Beyonce. Everyone's like, a she, you're all sheep. And I'm talking to the people who are obsessed and blind, just like, oh, oh, oh. like, it's so dumb. It's so ignorant. It's so ignorant. She's one issue because it was stupid and disrespectful and she should have at least reached out. But the real issue is the fact that the people like Pharrell, and like Chad, who Chad really is like an amoeba and just he's spineless. It's a miracle he can keep his neck up. But Pharrell knows better. This is a direct hit at me. He does this stuff all the time. It's very petty. Based on what we've learned in today's video, there are a few reasons why Pharrell and Chad are allegedly playing dirty. They could be upset that Khalees has publicly bashed them for stealing her publishing. Perhaps Pharrell still has some resentment from their alleged breakup, or maybe he and Chad are still in their feelings after Khalees decided to work with other producers on her third album. We'll probably never know the answer since Pharrell and Chad continue to take the high road despite all of Khalees' allegations. As the beehive goes in on her comments section, Khalees isn't backing down. One of Beyonce's fans thanked Khalees for the free promotion, and Khalees jokingly responded, she needs no promo from me, she has Satan, lol. This isn't the first time a celebrity has referenced the Carters and an evil entity. Those of you who watched our Hammer video know exactly what we're talking about. In an Instagram caption, Khalees wrote that there are gangsters in the industry that smile and get away with these types of things, but she's had enough. She ended her statement by writing, I'm saying it today. I'm coming for what's mine and I want reparations. Peace. What are your thoughts on the Khalees, Pharrell, Chad, and Beyonce situation? Let us know your thoughts down below. And thanks for watching RRG.